Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Dobana to the elders of Israel, the apostles of GMS, and honors and blessings to the elect of Israel throughout the four corners of the earth that's pushing this truth. The name of this lesson is going to be entitled, Nicaraguans are Israelites. And I'm doing this lesson because I found information specifically speaking about the people of Nicaragua. Okay, so, you know, um, you know, I thought it best if I bring it out. Okay, we're in the last days. We, we're not supposed to hold back any information because we're in the end. All right. Now, you know, uh, all of you people of North, Central and South American Indian descent are Israelites and also of the uh, of the Caribbean islands, the West Indian islands and and the different islands you have here. Okay. All the other islands. All of you are Israelites as well. But in this lesson, I'm specifically speaking about the people of Nicaragua because I found information about them. You know. All right. So you people that live in the country of Nicaragua, you're Israelites. Okay. And I'm going to prove it in this lesson. All right. And you be Israelites. From the uh, the tribe of Zebulun, okay. You be Israelites from the tribe of Zebulun, okay, which is this tribe right here, people from Guatemala to Panama, all right. So th that's your tribe according to the Bible, all right, of the twelve tribes of Israel, okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and get into this lesson. You know I'm not going to make it long. We have the book here. Origins of the American Indians, European Concepts, 1492-1729 by Lee Eldridge Huddleston. And we're getting straight to the point, okay? This is on page 71. Now, uh, this paragraph has good information about you know, uh, the Incas, you know, uh, the so-called Mexicans, okay? So, you know, it has information about a, a lot of different tribes of Israel, Okay, the tribe of Asher, the tribe of uh, Issachar, all right, uh, the, the so-called uh, Mayans, which are, which are the tribe of Zebulun, but we're talking about the, uh, the Nicaraguans, okay, which are the tribe of Zebulun, so we're going to start right here, okay? Some Nicaraguans would not allow women who had recently given birth into the temples, okay? So uh, that's a part of the law. That's one of the laws in the scriptures. If a woman had recently given birth to a, a, a girl or a boy, a, a boy or a girl, a, a man child or a woman child, she's not to enter into the sanctuary, but because she's unclean. Okay? So the Nicaraguans had kept that law. And I'm sure they kept a lot of other laws as well. But dealing with this law, we can get that in the scriptures. So uh, keep that in mind. Some Nicaraguans would not allow women who had recently given birth into the temples. Okay, so let's get that really quick. All right, this is going to be in Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 12. Okay, this is Leviticus chapter 12, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived have conceived seed and born a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days. According to the days of the separation for her infirmity shall she be unclean. All right. So a woman was unclean if she gave birth to a, a, a little boy, but also if she gave birth to a, a little girl, which you're going to see. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin Shall, shall be circumcised And she shall then continue In the blood of her purifying Three and thirty, and thirty days Which is thirty three days So uh, total It will be forty days That she was unclean she, she shall touch no hollow thing Nor come into the sanctuary Until the days Of her purifying be fulfilled So She's not to enter into the sanctuary She's not to touch any holy thing, any hollow thing, nor come into the sanctuary, which is which is the uh, temple, until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. But if she bear a maid child, which is a little girl, then she shall be unclean two weeks. So it's it's uh, double that of a boy. All right. 
it, it'll be 14 days as in her separation and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score and six days which is 60 and six days but total it, it will be 80 days so it's twice that of a boy so the whole point of that it just like we, we just read in this book here it says how uh how the Nicaraguans would not allow women who had recently given birth into the temples. All right. So that was out of the book of origins of the American Indians. All right. So we're going to get one more piece of information. All right. We have the book here, pre-Columbian literatures by Abraham Arias Loretta. And we're going to go to page 96. All right. And it speaks about the writing system of the people that you call Mayans. All right. Now we're going to go to the third paragraph here. It says several chroniclers, se several chroniclers written in the first years of the conquest are full of references and testimonies on the existence of an Aboriginal writing system. Among them, we have the, we have that of Her Herrera, uh, Tordesillas. Confirming their information about the natives' books, which were found in Yucatan and Honduras. All right, now in in Yucatan, which is in uh, northern Mexico, well, uh, northeast Mexico, really, you had the Mayans there, and you also had the Mayans in Honduras. All right, so you people that live in Honduras, you're also Israelites. All right, if I can pan the camera on Honduras. All right, which is to the left of uh, Nicaragua. You're Israelites as well. All right. Now, uh, continue reading. To uh, continue on, it says, and that of Lopez de Gomara, who says that the Indians of Nicaragua, of Nicaragua, have books of paper and parchment, more or less one hand in width, in width. By twelve hands in length, folded like bellows, and used on both sides to record in blue, purple, and other colors the historical events. So the the, the Indians of Nicaragua, they, they would uh they would write and record things in blue and purple. But you know when you read the scriptures, blue and purple were very uh, significant colors, dealing with the priesthood. Of uh, Israel Alright De Dealing with the priesthood of Israel The, the priests uh, They wore blue and purple in their garments Alright Now even though The uh, The 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 people of Nicaragua they're, they're a different tribe They're the tribe of Zebulon You know That just still proves that they're Israelites That they would uh, remember that You know they, They'd remember uh, these significant colors Blue and purple Alright And they record Historical events using these colors, but I'm going to get a scripture that's going to uh, go into how our people used uh, blue and purple. You know, dealing with the uh, priesthood. Okay. Now this is Exodus chapter 39 verse one, and of the blue and purple and scarlet they made clothes of service to do service in the holy place. And made the holy garments for Aaron as the Lord commanded Moses. And he made the ephod of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twine linen. And they did beat the gold in, into thin plates and cut it into wires to work it in the blue and in the purple and in the scarlet and in the fine linen with cunning work. All right, so... Those are the colors that the priests wore in their garments, blue and purple and scarlet also. All right. Now I have some pictures here. If I can uh, pan the camera on these pictures that I have. Showing you uh, people of Central America. You know, the, the so-called uh, Guatemalan, so-called uh, Honduran, so-called Nicaraguans. You know, they, they wear those colors this day. To this day, they have uh, blue and purple and scarlet in their garments. You know, you see this man right here. He has it in, in his uh, in his hat. 
and his head wrap, okay? And the, and these are people that live in uh, Central America today, all right? You see this woman here? She has her daughter with her, but she has blue and purple and also scarlet, which is red, in, in, her, uh, in her sweater, okay? You know, so this, this just proves that they're Israelites, man, all right? You see these women here? All right. Now, uh, these are people that's throughout all of uh, Central America. They're, they're not just uh, Nicaragua, but it proves the point. You know, you know, some of these people uh, are in uh, Honduras. Some of them are in Guatemala. Some of them are in uh, are, are in Nicaragua, you know. But as you can see, they have blue and purple and scarlet in their garments. OK, so it just proves the point. OK. That, that you people that live in Central America today, that we, we were speaking about the people of Nicaragua, that, that you're Israelites, all right? You know, because you have the, these uh, same colors that were used uh, for the priesthood, okay? You know, so uh, I hope this lesson was edifying, you know, to the listeners. You know, uh, you're Israelites, man. You're Israelites, and we're in the last days. And, and the Most High, Yahweh, which is the name of God, which his name means he to be, and his son, Yahweh Shai, whom everyone calls Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai means he is the deliverer. He's coming to deliver the 12 tribes of Israel. You got 12,000 out of each tribe, and you're the tribe of Zebulun, the, the people we just men mentioned, the people in Nicaragua, okay? So with that, I hope this lesson was edifying. And so the next lesson I say, Shalom.